is the last of the ninjas. The sole custodian of hundreds of years of tradition. But this 70 year old is watching Japanese tradition slowly die. Masaaki Hatsumi is an expert in the art of assassination. At his training school, students come to learn the 36 deadly techniques. But the vast bulk of Hatsumi's students are foreigners. The ninja master says interest in ninjutsu has all but dried up for Japanese. And Hatsumi has a prophecy. Nothing could be more traditional than the art of sumo wrestling. But it's in trouble on the ropes. And just as a ninja master prophesizes, its people are dying. But in Sumo's case, just how and why they die is a peculiarly Japanese mystery. This is a sumo stable, a house where wrestlers live and train in Spartan conditions. The stables are the last outposts of feudalism in Japan. Junior wrestlers perform menial tasks for their seniors, and ancient Japanese hierarchy is strictly observed. Japan's highest ranked sumo wrestler is this man, Akabono. Traditionalists are appalled by his success, not because Akabono isn't good, but because he isn't Japanese. Japan's best known wrestler is American, born and raised in Hawaii. For Akabono, succeeding at the sport was relatively easy compared with understanding its time-honoured complexities. The Japanese have a hard time understanding this. So for somebody being out of Japan and coming here, I've been here 13 years and try, I still cannot understand it. The origins of the arcane and secretive sumo society go back more than 2,000 years. It was always much more than sport or entertainment. Part ritual, part religion, sumo was closely associated with Shinto. It was said to embody Japan's national spirit and its emphasis on hierarchy, respect and tradition. But for the modern young Japanese warrior, there are more worldly and more Western interests. Sumo is being pushed aside. <laughs> Tournaments like this one are rare these days. The number of school children wrestling is down more than one third on 10 years ago. There are 100 times as many children playing soccer and baseball as there are wrestling. 
、まあ、子供にとってその、まあ、判断基準っていうのはかっこいいかかっこよくないかと、まあ、そういったことじゃないかと思いますんでね、あのー、やっぱり、まあ、ユニホームと回しどっちがいいかといえばやっぱりユニホームの方がかっこいいんじゃないかと思いますし、あのー、やっぱり、えー、限られた子のスポーツになってしまうんじゃないかという気がします。はいチャンピオンシップ。Former wrestler, now persona non grata, this man, Itai, is at the center of the scandal. The first suggestion there was something rotten in the sumo world surfaced in Nagoya, an industrial town two hours by bullet train south of Tokyo. This modern Japan is a world apart from the one in which these people's ancestors first drew circles in the village earth and wrestled. In 1996, this man's father, Siichiro Hashimoto, a former sumo wrestler and a stable master called a Naruto, stunned the sumo establishment with a series of sensational allegations. They claimed sumo had close links to the Yakuza, the Japanese mafia, and accused wrestlers of regularly fixing matches for money, taking drugs, holding orgies, and dodging their taxes. The two men promised to reveal more in a book and agreed to address the foreign media at the Tokyo Press Club. But Hashimoto's father never got to speak at the press club. When Hashimoto fell ill, he was brought here, to this hospital outside Nagoya. The next day, his friend Onaruto came to visit, and suddenly he too got sick. Both men died within a few hours of each other. The doctor said the cause of their deaths was a mystery disease. Remarkably, there was no autopsy and no police investigation. A story like the death of two high profile whistleblowers would have received front page coverage in the West. But in the cozy world of sumo, the issue received no attention in the mainstream Japanese media. You would think that one of the Japanese weeklies at least would、uh, check into it and really question, start questioning, but never happened. After watching and writing about sumo for 40 years, Andy Adams is not really surprised. I think it's part of the Japanese character that these things、uh, go on, and、uh, the Japanese feel it was better not to、uh, pursue it and ask questions about it and just ignore it. And this happens a lot in Japan, but、uh, this is part of the Japanese character. One reason an investigation never happened. Is that few in Japan are prepared to challenge the authority of the Sumo Association, a mysterious and well connected body that controls every aspect of the sport?
we made repeated requests for an interview with the association. But getting a straight answer proved harder than toppling a sumo wrestler. Inside this stadium is one of the year's major sumo tournaments, but this is the closest we were allowed to get outside, and we were quickly moved on. Even filming lower-ranked sumos on the street requires the permission of the all-powerful association. It's all-powerful because it's made up of ex-sumo wrestlers themselves, and there's no outside interference. It's only the ex-wrestlers. But the bigger they are, the harder they fall. And now, for perhaps the first time in its history, the Sumo Association has been pushed onto the back foot. It's been dealt another body blow by one of its own. A former wrestler, Itai, who has gone public admitting he rigged sumo bouts and claiming the vast majority of sumo matches are fixed. <laughs> The latest allegations forced the Sumo Association to defend itself. We wanted to track Itai down to question him. But after making his allegations, Mr. Itai disappeared. In Tokyo, it's not hard to lose yourself in the crowd. Itai was well aware of what fate can befall whistleblowers. His former stable master was a Naruto, one of the men allegedly murdered in Nagoya. Since retiring from wrestling, Itai has run a restaurant. We went there, but were served up a story that he had gone on a fishing trip in the country indefinitely. After weeks of phone calls, we received word through an intermediary that Mr. Itai would talk to us on condition that the story was never broadcast in Japan. An interview was arranged on the outskirts of Tokyo. <laughs> Itai repeated and elaborated on his claims, telling us that up to 80% of professional sumo bouts were rigged, with wrestlers paying their opponents up to 700,000 yen or 6,500 US dollars to take a fall. To back up his claims of conspiracy, Itai produced an audio recording of a high-ranking official, which, he says, proves the Sumo Association itself was aware of the bout rigging. <laughs> Itai went on to name names, giving us a list of sumos who he said had fixed bouts with him. The list contained some of the biggest wrestlers in sumo, including the sports superstar Akabono. All I have to say on the subject is, um, like you've seen today, we come out, we work hard every day. Um, it's, un it's unthinkable. It's, I, I never seen anybody do it or heard of anybody doing it. but. Like outside in the world today, every time there's something good going on, there's always somebody trying to bring it down. The fact that we were asking questions the sumo world wasn't used to being asked did not go unnoticed. Suddenly, after numerous faxes and dozens of phone calls, the Sumo Association granted us an interview with the man who controls every aspect of the sumo empire. <laughs> The chairman insisted on the moral virtue of the sumo world 
and once again denied any match fixing. But some say the dark side of sumo is not new, that indeed it is rooted in the very history of the sport. Ichiro Nita is a professor of history at Tokyo University. Professor Nita claims that Sumo's links with the Japanese Mafia remain. No one is more convinced of that relationship than Kiyonari Hashimoto. The latest allegations simply confirm what he has suspected all along, that his father was murdered. やはりまあ、その動かすっていう力はあると思うんですよ。だから一人、一人、It is unlikely that the truth of any of these matters will be known. The press is disinterested, the public doesn't really care. While some traditions may be under threat, one is alive and thriving. The Japanese code of silence. <laughs>